So uh, here we're going to go over um, some medical terminology, prefixes, suffixes, and, and such. Um, we're going to go over a couple in this video instead of just doing one for each video. I think that would be a little bit more efficient. <clears throat> so first we're going to go over this acr. We've got acron in Greek. Um, so this is going to be like an extreme portion. Um, and so when you say extreme, uh, this means not like extreme, like politically extreme, but like um, <clears throat> very close to the top or to an edge or something, <clears throat> an extreme, extreme in position. Um, next we're going to do acousis and um, acous, um, <clears throat> like as an acoustic. Um, this will have to do with hearing. Um, so anything related essentially to the ear. You can think about it. <clears throat> um, or I guess I should say anything related to hearing. Um, and this is from uh, in Greek, which is I hear, and that's sort of the reference form is the I form, uh, traditionally. With, um, Greek. So to here, you can think about it as to here. Um, next is kind of an interesting one. So ad, um, this means towards, right? It's actually, it's an actual preposition that's used as an, a prefix, both in Latin and in, um, in words that come from Latin. Um, so towards or at, <clears throat> um, However, you're going to have to note that this D here will sometimes change form. So a word that this occurs in is afferent. So like an afferent neuron goes towards the brain. This, he, this uh, D turned into an F a lot of times. Um, this D is going to turn into essentially the consonant of the next sort of, of the root word, <clears throat> the beginning of the root word. Another, um, Another word with this is apposition turned into a P, <clears throat> right? So afferent going towards the brain, apposition, positioning it something at something else, or proximate also positioning something, or putting something close to something else. Um, they're add, but it's sort of add in disguise. And the last one in this video um, is also quite interesting. Is it just has a lot of forms you're gonna to have to watch out for um but it's i write it in greek first um haima okay haima in Attic greek so what we're gonna see here is um, when it's in the latin alphabet it would be hi with an i but really when it goes from greek to latin a or alpha yoda becomes alpha or AE in Latin script, Haima. <clears throat> Very often this is seen as um, Himata because of a, an alternate grammatical form, like Himato, Hematology, right? <clears throat> this form is used to combine with other words and, and roots a lot. Um, so you'll have to keep your eye out for both of those, but there's also another form. Um, that you'll see a lot, right? <clears throat> and so we've got, uh, let me actually just delete these so we can talk about the other form. And the other form is sort of a step simpler. Eem, oftentimes eem, yeah, but the eem is what's important. Um, so in a later stage of sort of new Latin, the a, e went to e. And there are, there are actually a lot of sound changes that sort of follow this path. And so this became um, emia, and then Latin's a little bit funny with H's, so when it was borrowed from Greek into Latin, a lot of times we just sort of, and to be honest, Greek is a little funny with H's too, um, <clears throat> we drop the H, and we just get em. So, hypokalemia, this is actually a word with tons of interesting etymologies, we're just going to talk about the emia, so low potassium in the blood. 
and that cow is something that I mean, you could spend a couple of videos talking about that etymology, but we're just going to leave it at that. Hypokalemia, um, low potassium in the blood, essentially.